Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 12 beta 10 and public beta eight have been out for a few days. I've been using them primarily on my iPhone 10 and my iPad pro and also fairly heavily on the iPhone 5s. And we'll talk more about that in just a moment, but I also did a YouTube poll where I asked you on the community page how it went for you. So we'll talk about that in a moment as well. Now, my initial experience has been pretty positive as far as the overall speed scrolling speed is nice and smooth. Opening apps usually is very smooth. I haven't had really any issues with that. One area I have had issues with though is in settings. So if I go into settings and then scroll, sometimes it would kind of lock up and freeze and not do anything. And then I could either close it or just wait for it and hope it freed up. And it would take sometimes up to about 10 to 20 seconds and then it would be fine. It's kind of random when it happens, but I'm not really sure why it's happening, but it is a bug and definitely should be reported if you haven't reported that and you've experienced that. Also, I posted on Twitter, the experience of this is a little message popping up saying, that I need to update the OS. So that's been reported by a lot of people just popping up onto the screen saying you need to update to iOS 12. I think that's to, to help people when they're going to actually push the final version, it'll pop up on all our devices and then we'll know when it's available. Maybe they were testing it. I'm not sure, but it seemed to happen at the same time for everyone. It was pretty interesting. And then the third issue I've had is not so great battery. You'll see right now I have 21% battery. My battery health is still 100% on this device anyway. And on my iPhone 8 Plus, which is still on a previous version, that is actually at 99%. It's not turned on right now, but that's at 99%. So my iPhone 10 is still at 100, but my battery life, you'll see over the past day is only two and a half hours of screen on time. That's pretty poor for me. And for some reason it hasn't been great, but it's been getting better with the later betas. But for this one in particular, it just has not been great for me. So that's a complaint I have. Maybe not so many others. I've seen some people say it's pretty good. Now, as far as on the iPad, no issues whatsoever on my iPad pro, uh, this is working just fine no slowdowns, no lockups, no issues with settings. I've had to, no issues whatsoever. So nothing to report here. There's not a whole lot new going on there. And then with my seven plus and SE, everything's fine. But the other phone that's been working really well is the five S. Now this is primarily used by uh, someone else. And if we go to settings, we'll take a look at battery and see what they did today. We'll let it load. And you'll see here, it only shows an hour and 14 minutes of screen on time, but that's 24% playing a game and then some messages and some other things. So a lot of gaming going on. Let's take a look at the last four days since this has not had iOS 12 on it previous to this beta. So average screen on time is only 33 minutes. The funny thing is, is with this particular version, uh, this has actually been really fast. There's no speed issues. This may need a new battery. Actually, this phone in, in, in particular, but scrolling is nice and smooth. Games seem to run okay, much better than you would expect for a 5S or something of this age. It seems to be working okay, and you'll see it does take a while to load things like Minecraft, but it should still work fine. So we'll let that load here just a moment. And the SE and the 7 Plus, again, the performance, if it's good on any of these devices, is going to be good on any device that you have. This is the oldest. If it's good here, it will be good on a 6, 6 Plus, 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 8, etc. So it's I really am trying to cover the whole range of processors to show you the overall experience. So this is the slowest of all of them, and it seems to do okay. Of course, you're going to have to wait longer than you normally would with a game than you would on, say, a 7 Plus or an iPad Pro. So it's finally loaded. You'll see it's nice and smooth. We'll let it run here. <laughs> Almost dropped that there. We'll let it run. Oh, well, it's a little bit choppy right there, but it is playable. You'll see it works okay. So you could play games on this, do whatever you need to. And let's take a look at what you had to say in the community poll, because I've read every single one of what you had to say in this. Now on the community poll, you'll see it went live 12 hours ago. It's had over three and a half thousand votes. 
and there's 157 comments. I've read every single one of them, and I was really impressed with how great this has been. 66% said great. Only 4% said terrible. These are much, much better numbers than we had on iOS 11. And we just hit low power there, but okay. But some bugs is 18% and then 12% on Android. So we'll scroll all the way down. Like I said, I've read all of these and a lot of you have said it's very good. The most complaints that I've seen have to do with settings freezing up, just like I'm experiencing that same pop-up and then some issues with Wi-Fi I've seen in here. So a lot of just great, 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 great. Okay. But some bugs and group notifications of Twitter. 8 Plus has been been on the beta since beta 2. Great, great, great. Very stable on the 7 Plus, 7, 7, and iPad Mini 4. Great, but performance went down. No, I did see a lot of people saying that the Geekbench scores went down. That's different than performance. If it's still performing okay, those numbers are kind of hit and miss, and there could be something else going on there. We'll keep going here. The performance is good on the iPhone 10, but I'm having issues with Bluetooth. I've seen this as well. So there's a couple people saying issues with Bluetooth, issues with Wi-Fi disconnecting. Great on a 5S. Great. No issues on my iPhone 10 or my iPad 2018. Smooth and there isn't anything to complain about. And what's really encouraging about this is iOS 11, even on the later versions of it, had nowhere near the, the reliability of iOS 12, even in the beta five range. There's only one or two people I see that say this is slower than beta one and beta one was horrible for me and most people. So see, this has been a very horrible beta. There's a lot of bugs, problems. A few of my sometimes crash and Bluetooth and GPS have worsened. It's had respring after changing wallpaper. I think two of you or so said the same thing and that I had that issue on the previous beta. So it's hard to say what's going on there, but no bugs. Battery life isn't the best. When are they going to fix the annoying folder opening lag? Now I did read this and the folder opening lag. These are some folders down towards the bottom. I have no lag whatsoever. So I'm not sure what you're experiencing as far as that goes. I know you said the folders had to be at the bottom, but really I have no issues. I mean, they're down towards the bottom of the screen, like you said. So I don't really have any of that lag at all. So far, so good on a six plus calls drop and call failures have stopped. Might actually have been an issue with the betas. Excellent. Excellent. So many greats in here and that's very encouraging. Like I said, so let's see if we can find a couple other comments with bugs. Seems like battery life is not as good as the previous betas on my iPhone 10. Also some bugs with YouTube. Feel like beta seven was more complete feeling. I had excellent battery life. I do think battery was better on the previous beta for me as well. iPhone SE having touch screen issues, open an app and have to wait or force close the app. Try rebooting it. That may or may not fix it. It's hard to say, but make sure you report that. We'll keep going here. And personal hotspot not turning off. Try a reboot. That's usually what I have to do. If I have issues, I haven't had any with this one. Yet to see the speed and fluidness of iOS 12 beta 1. That's the this must be the comment I was talking about earlier. I've this I would say beta 1 was horrible compared to these betas, but that was just my experience. Still a couple of leftover bugs I've posted to Apple. They don't seem to care when his face ID toggles and settings are laggy. And Siri with the battery life is, it gives it normally the way Apple does feedback is they'll prioritize what's most important and then knock out the smaller bugs later on. So if they've got some major issues like Apple pay not working, which is some of the bugs that are known for this one, they're going to fix those first and then work on the littler bugs later been using iPhone 10 since first iOS. So you should not feel like you need to upgrade to Android based on a beta because beta is not finalized software. Uh, Google even does betas for the pixels, for example. So I wouldn't just upgrade over a beta, but try it out more, more like great, but one bug. It's almost perfect on my iPhone 10. My only issue is the settings app freezes on me a lot. Like I was saying, same thing. So thank you so much to everyone that participated in this. I really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we get another beta this coming week or so, and then we'll see a final somewhere in this week. Like I expect, I hope it's in this week. I'm not sure we should see some new iPhones with a new Apple announcement. So we're waiting for that. And I'll keep you updated with that as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description below. Like I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.